Hey everyone, Joel Hansen here, and just a quick stop as we are on our way to Juicy Seafood to do their freaking 20 pound crawfish challenge they have going for us. So this is gonna be an absolutely massive challenge here with Miss Reno. And essentially it's gonna be two of us, 20 pounds of crawfish. Um, we have like 30 minutes to do it, so it's gonna be pretty quick, but it should be fun. Wish us luck, we do, we get all the crawfish for free which is valued, I think around two, I don't know, is it 200 bucks? Something like that? Something like that. So it's a bit. But anyway, super delicious food. We had, we were here at Juicy Seafood previously, absolutely loved everything. So I'm excited to have some more crawfish. And uh, yeah, let's go. All right, everyone, so here we go. A 20 pound pile of crawfish. This thing is absolutely massive. That is all I can say. So we got it flavored like a medium to hot. So I think it's gonna be pretty tasty. Lots of that good old Cajun flavors. Basically, I'm not a pro at eating crawfish, but this is gonna be interesting. So, Reyna, looking forward to getting started? Yes. The bib? Yes. I'm just covered in fish juices all the time, like already at this point, so. My hair up and everything. We, ate, uh, we had some seafood the other day. I felt like it was on me. Want to give us a countdown? We'll say, uh, they have a lovely audience. Like, you want, you guys want to give us a countdown? Alright guys, you want to count us down from 10? Yeah, okay. Sounds Whenever you're ready. Cool. Alright, so maybe 10, 9, nine 8, eight seven, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 2 1. Let's get go. It. 20 pounds of profit. Try to get through as quick as you can. Yeah. So how do you get the tail out? Um, do you break it? Or not? No. Um, that worked. Alright, I'm learning. Crawfish technique, 101. Joe is a fast learner. I do what I can. I wonder if anybody else has eaten 20 pounds of crawfish in one sitting before. Probably not. I feel this is a bit extreme. <laughs> people in Louisiana, like you said? Yeah. I, I, uh, I know a lot of people that are. From Louisiana, they will fit in all of them. Oh, yeah? Mud bugs, right? Mm -hmm. oh, that one's going out perfectly. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, this just definitely want, this one's definitely a bit spicier than before. It tastes really good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, quite a bit of heat on that last one. Ooh, this one's a bit good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. The crawfish? Yeah. I'm dipping in the sauce. The sauce is so buttery. Buttery and spicy. Yep. It is really good though. Juicy seafood. Definitely has some good juicy seafood. Hey everyone, welcome to today's video where today we're at Juicy Seafood. And can you believe what we're eating or can you take a guess? Guess what? Juicy seafood. Yes, that's right. So here we are with 20 pounds of crawfish. Yes, so 20 pounds of crawfish. I would definitely bet that this is one of the biggest piles of crawfish ever eaten on camera, at least sat down by two individuals. I know there's people out there who like to eat crawfish, but this was a lot of it. And guess what? I really like crawfish too. This is only my second time ever having crawfish, um, but I will say I very, very much enjoyed it. So we'll talk a little about the flavors. So absolutely love the flavors of this dish. The sauce is literally pure butter and basically Cajun seasoning and you can't go wrong with it. It is so, so, so delicious. It is savory, it is buttery, it is salty, it is a little spicy. It is just, oh, I love the flavors, guys. I love those Cajun spices, I love those Cajun flavors. And this was just no exception. This whole dish was just absolutely fantastic. Here at Juicy Seafood, they really, really know how to make some good juicy, well, obviously seafood. So while there are locations all across Tennessee, the one we were at was the location in Smyrna, Smyrna, Tennessee, so kind of in the Nashville area, um, but yeah, seriously, like, excellent staff, the staff were so friendly, everybody was very charismatic, very courteous, making sure we had everything we needed, the food was absolutely great, as I already mentioned, like, love the crawfish. Um, and so yeah, no complaints in regards to that. 
Um, when it comes to eating crawfish, they're definitely, it's, it's a very much a technique. It's not as much like a straight capacity food. It's definitely not a speed food. It is very much a technique food. So essentially, the way to do it is you grab the body, you grab the tail as I just did, you give it a twist and hope that the tail kind of just pulls out. And if it doesn't, you'll have to do what I just did there where you kind of got to break into the tail through the underside, the softer kind of cartilage, and then kind of pop the rest of the meat out. Um, they're really the only noticeable, distinguishable, uh, worthwhile meat eating in the crawfish is essentially in the tail. Um, unlike a lobster, people don't eat the meat in the claws, etc., etc. Um, if you're wondering what a crawfish tastes like, mm, it's it definitely kind of. I mean, hmm, it's a hard to describe. Um, it doesn't quite taste like lobster to me. It doesn't quite taste like crab. Probably tastes a little bit more like a shrimp than like a lobster in a way, so kind of like a shrimp, but yeah, it is, it doesn't taste like a shrimp because I'll be honest, I'm not a big shrimp fan generally, um, but I really like the crawfish. A lot of this does, of course, have to do, go with the seasoning, but I would say if I had to compare it between like anything else, I would say it's kind of like a mix between a crab and a shrimp, I guess is the best way to put it. You know, if you watched this at like 10 times slowed, it'd be the ultimate crawfish moot <laughs> That's true. Oh. Swirt juicy, right? Mud bugs. Front ads. Crawfish. Definitely some heat in some of these. So although crawfish are very, very common in many cultures, um, in the southern United States, such as like Louisiana, Texas, etc., they have their crawfish seasons and they are very popular items at such and, and well, at all times of the year, but especially during those, um, they have crawfish boils, which is essentially what this is. So they'll have, cook up a whole big pot of crawfish in, with seasoning, generally they'll also add corn and tomatoes and onions and stuff. And they'll literally just kind of drain them, strain them, and dump them out on a table like this or put them in a big bowl, a big pot, and people just kind of dig out of it and eat it like we are as such. Of course, we're eating this at a quicker pace than somebody would eat casually, but this is essentially how people eat crawfish. It was my first time having a real crawfish boil or like a real crawfish uh, endeavor. Before that was just a couple crawfish in a challenge. And like I said, this won't be my last. Really enjoyed this, guys flavors were fantastic um, so yeah kind of an interesting thing because up here in Canada where I'm from 
and know in a lot of the northern states, crawfish just aren't a thing. Um, but if you've never given them a try, I definitely would recommend it, as it's very unique. It's easier without the Cajun butter does not belong in your eyeballs. I should have goggles. <laughs> That's actually funny. It's actually a good idea. That's a good idea, yeah. We went with a medium to hot level of spice, and if I was to eat it leisurely, I'd go with the hot for sure. Um, with the spices, like as the heat level increased, it was also just like more flavor in general, I found. So, um, I would say like, you know, even if you don't really, really like spicy, you want a good spice level, the hot would have been perfect. But again, when you are eating such a quantity of food, it's better to be on the uh, more careful, cautious side, because I find personally, large volumes of food and spicy foods really don't mix well in my stomach. Um, but these were fantastic and I definitely could have went with the hot. And if I was ever gonna have leisurely crawfish, I'd definitely ask for hot. But with that, everybody, I think that's the rest of the info I have to give you. So with that, let's get to the rest of the video. Mount Crawfishius is being dethroned and dismantled. Oh, I actually can't do it really fast. That was the plan. I'm actually really enjoying these. These are freaking delicious. These are really good, yeah. Mm -hmm. The size of these are amazing. And the ones in the buttery sauce, holy cow. Oh, yeah. I've been dipping it. Yeah. yeah. So good. The perfect amount of spice. Have you tried the broccoli yet? No. It's really good. It soaks up all the flavor. We're getting under our last crawfish. That's so delicious. Mm. Oh, ooh, ooh. That butter sauce. I'm not going to drink it, but hypothetically speaking, I think I could. Not the last one. Oh, I got a tail here after I get out. There we go. 
some are done, but I like the broccoli. Spicy broccoli. You gotta eat your vegetables, right? That's right. Mm. Healthy vegetables. Wow, you're right. That is buttery and. This is a meal. Ooh, these are spicy. Is it empty though? Oh, oh ow! Oh. That hurts. Okay. Well, anyway, we got it. We got through it. That was a no-burner. One more. One more bucket. All right. Oh, that's so good. So we just ate 20 pounds of crawfish. My camera says like 19-ish minutes, so I'm gonna guess about 18 minutes, maybe something like that. So it was super, super delicious. Thank you for watching everybody. I thoroughly enjoyed that juicy seafood. Definitely a place for some damn good juicy seafood. And a great time. Staff are great, great environment, family style, just dumping shells all over the place. Thank you so much. So now everybody, I'm probably covered in butter, but until next time, stay happy, healthy, hungry, happy eating. Brenna, any words? Um, no, other than this was amazing. You gotta check this place out. They have multiple locations all over uh, Tennessee. We are at the. How do you Smyrna. say that? Smyrna. Smyrna. We are at the Smyrna location, but check them all out. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm just. I'm gonna try not to drink this. Until next time, everybody. You know Bye. what to do. love down here Tennessee thank you to everybody who came out we have a whole cheering squad it's just been a great time and great food and great people and what more can I ask for and of course a nice hand washing station so now I'm all clean so that's a little better too. all right everybody and so here we are in Franklin Tennessee a lot of history here especially uh, dealing around the Confederate uh, Confederate War um, so here we are at a the McGavick um, cemetery essentially, um, Confederate Cemetery, which is obviously a place when commemoration and a resting ground for many of the soldiers who died in the uh, Confederate War there. Um, so we'll give you a little bit of the history. Um, it's pretty interesting, pretty unique. They have all these little rows of uh, gravestones. So yeah, let's uh, have a peek and here's, here we go. Um, so the Confederate Cemetery. Um, Following the Battle of Franklin in November 30th, 1864, John McGavick, owner of Carton Ton, collected and buried here um, the bodies of 1,496 Confederates. The five general officers killed there were interred elsewhere after being brought to the house. Other Confederates were later buried here, including Brig Jen Johnson K. Duncan. So this is really cool. So again, just like another piece, um, speaking about the individuals, talking about the uh, Battle of uh, Franklin, um, that, you know, and then, which had temporary graves and they're reburied here. But look at this. So this is a picture from 1867, right? This is the exact view we're looking at right now. These are the, that's the fence. This is the row. But what is so intriguing is over in the 153 years, Look at this, there's no big trees, right? I'm gonna show you this exact spot like in between with the path, there's no big trees. So look at this big tree here now. So this tree is like 153, I guess, or however years old, and it is massive, like the trunk of this. But anyway, so look at this. Keep that image in your head, right? Path in the middle, fences, the rows. And that exact image is this right here, right? We have the rows, hold on, where's my finger? We have the rows on either side. Again, there's the big path in between. And just now, what is these absolutely giant, massive trees? Especially this one, this one is just massive. So uh, 
yeah, like, it's pretty crazy. And so now we're actually in the cemetery again. This is the path where it was in that picture, which is crazy. And then, like I said, especially when you see how big these trees are, they're just absolutely giant. I mean, that one is, I don't know, three and a half, four feet across. Like, there's my hand. So yeah, pretty, uh, pretty phenomenal. And then, I mean, they definitely have, I guess, some names, some abbreviations. Definitely have all the graves numbered. It's, uh, it's pretty, pretty interesting. Now, beside a, a hay field, but obviously, you know, it's well preserved. So this is all run by donations, which is very interesting. But yeah, so let's uh, just rows and rows and rows of these little, little gravestones. So what's interesting here too, and they've like, you know, very well kept is, so these are the, uh, like the original stones and they were insignia with not only a, like a name or initial, but with a number, but since like a lot of them, as you see, just with erosion and whatever have basically, which, you know, kind of crazy to think that it was, you know, engraved, now it's eroded. Um, they put like these new little plaques. And then what else is interesting is they seem for multiple states, they have kind of a big, uh, they have a big thing here, um, big, big whatever statue thing for each of the states. So this one's like Texas, says 89 killed at Franklin, whereas if we look down the line here, you know, there's like one there, um, you know, there's like Missouri, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, etc. So it's pretty interesting. Like here's, uh, here's Tennessee. So Tennessee, 2.30. So yeah, it's very well, I mean, for what it is, I think very well recognized, and then, like I said, very well kept the way they're and doing it. in some of this section, um, more history, but this time really looking at, you know, kind of the Africans, Americans, um, you know, the kind of the, the more slave aspect, not that of the soldiers. So here, you know, known to God, uh, here rests the mortal remains of the men, women, and children of Africa, enslaved in life, freed in death. So, definitely one of those things where, lest we forget, remember your, your uh, history, folks, and maybe there's even more this way. And then we're getting some very meaningful thoughts here. You know, pause and reflect. Please take a moment to pause and reflect before continuing. Human beings were enslaved here for several decades, and on November 30th, 1864, a terrible battle of the American Civil War unfolded on this site. We ask for your respect during your visit. And this is that of a plantation um, and or the farm. So it's pretty, uh, pretty amazing. Big houses, traditional kind of yards, lots of greenery. So yeah, pretty, uh, pretty important to know your history. All right, and here's the piece that I was missing earlier and it kind of puts all together. So Currenton, um, it basically, so owned by, you know, Nashville rel uh, natives, etc. So on November 30th, 1864, what actually happened is you had both sides of the um, opposition, both sides of both, both people battling, both the North, the South. And they basically just came around and were fighting like this, their plantation is basically right in the middle of it. So that's their involvement. And so with that, basically in a number of hours, they had almost 10,000 dead. Um, Currenton, the plantation became a field hospital for the Confederate um, individuals. So yeah, talk about having um, non-optimal house placing when you have the north and the south literally meeting to fight right on your grounds for the battlefield basically so definitely interesting but that's how this whole uh specific plantation everything brought into it that makes a lot more sense
And everywhere in Franklin, there's all these uh, kind of like wartime fences, we'll call them. Um, definitely lots of uh, memorial sites. Everywhere is mentioned about battlegrounds, the Civil War. Carter House is just down there. I don't know the history behind it, but we just kind of pulled in. It's like a house, some cannons up the road there. So a lot of history here in Franklin.